friends. Thank you for joining me for Family Storytime. My name is Emily, and I like to start story time with a special chant. This chant is called the Bread and Butter Chant, and it lets us hear the, all the sounds in a word because we're gonna say the word hello very slowly. Here's how the bread and butter chant goes. And you can do this at home with different words too. It's really fun with long words like the names of dinosaurs. We're gonna make a beat on our thighs. And here's our chant. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slowly as we can. Hello. Oh, I heard some sounds in there. I heard an H and an L and an O. Let's try it just for fun as quickly as we can. Okay. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quickly as we can. Hello. Great job. Okay. Let's introduce our letter of the day. If you know its name, you can call it out. Yeah, it's a P. What sound does the letter P make? Uh-huh. Yeah. P -p -p. Very good. Okay. Well, let's put our fingers up in the air. We're going to make a P with our fingers. We're going to write a P. Now, P has one straight line, a vertical line that goes up and down, right? And one curvy line like that. If you put another curvy line on it, it would be a B. But we want to make a P. So one straight line, one vertical line, one curve. Here we go. Back up to the top. Boop. And there is our P. Ah, letter P is great because there are so many things we can do that start with the letter P. Can you pretend you are uh, pushing a door closed, a really hard door? Push! We're pushing! And now we're gonna pu -pu pull it open. Pull! Ah, uh, what else can we do? We can pout. Mm. Make a face like you're pouting. Mm. What does that mean? Kind of means like you're showing everyone you're in a bad mood. You're not ready to be happy yet if you pout. We can pause. <laughs> That's what it means to pause. Just to kind of stop and take a little breath and sec. Pause, and then you can start on. We can also play, one of my favorite things to do. We can pretend, one of my other favorite things to do. And my really favorite thing to do, we can we can pop bubbles. Pop has a P at the beginning and the end. P pop. Hear that? Cool. Let's say it together one more time. Pop. Okay. You guys like to pop bubbles? Let's pop some bubbles. This rhyme is called bubble blowing. And to make our bubbles, we're going to need our bubble juice, our mixture that lets us make bubbles, and our bubble wand. We're going to dip our wand in, blow a bubble, and pop it when it gets really We'll do this one twice. Dip your wand, gently blow. Watch the tiny bubble grow. Bigger, bigger, round and fat, rainbow colored, and then splat! <laughs> Good job. Let's make another bubble. Bubble juice, bubble wand, dip your wand, Gently blow. Watch the tiny bubble grow. Bigger, bigger, round and fat, rainbow colored, and then splat! Oh, excellent bubble popping. All right, it's time for today's story. And here is the cover of today's story. I see a bear on there. What species of bear is this? What kind of bear? Yeah. It's a panda bear. Hey, panda starts with P, doesn't it? Panda. And look, we've got another P right there. This book is called Please, Mr. Panda. Please, Mr. Panda. What's panda carrying there? Mmm, donuts. And look, two of them are colors that start with P. There's a purple one with sprinkles and a pink one. Okay, let's read Please, Mr. Panda. It is written and illustrated by Steve Anthony. He did everything to make this book. And here's Mr. Panda. And Mr. Panda says, would you like a donut? 
to this guy. Who's this guy? Little penguin. And penguin says, give me the pink one. And Mr. Panda walks off and said, no, you cannot have a donut. I've changed my mind. Would you like a donut? And who's this? Yeah, that's a skunk. And the skunk says, I want the blue one and the yellow one. And Panda walks off and says, no, I have changed my mind. You cannot have a donut. Here he is out in the ocean. It's a big orca. And he says, would you like a donut? And our orca, our whale says, I want them all. Then bring me more. What do you think Mr. Panda's gonna do? Have you noticed a pattern here? What does he always seem to say? He does, he rows away and he says, no, you cannot have a donut. I have changed my mind. Would anyone else like a donut? Uh, who's here? What, why is Mr. Panda upside down? <gasps> Oh, I see, it's a lemur. And lemurs hanging upside down and talking to Mr. Panda because that's how lemurs hang. The lemur says, hello, may I have a donut? Please, Mr. Panda? And there's lemur. And there's a really important P word, please. Do you think saying please might help? Let's find out. Panda says, you can have them all. <gasps> Thank you very much, says Lemur. Thank you is a good thing to say after please, right? Thank you very much. And Mr. Panda says, you're welcome. I do not even like donuts. And that is Please Mr. Panda by Steve Anthony. Okay, let's do a rhyme about another animal that starts with P. We're gonna do a rhyme about some pigs. Hey, did you know that pigs are really, really smart? Yeah, pigs are so smart, they can play simple video games. Can you imagine? They are. So our pigs are gonna roll in the mud. Pigs roll in the mud because it feels squishy and squashy and good, and it also helps them cool down. So pigs rolling in the mud, and it feels so good they go squishy, squashy. So I want you to go squishy, squashy too. Imagine you're rolling in some warm, wonderful mud. Uh, and then they're going to say what pigs say, which is what? What does a pig say? Oink! Yeah, that's right. So let's get ready to roll in the mud. First, we're going to put up our four little pigs. Four little pigs rolled in the mud. Squishy, squashy, felt so good. Farmer took one piggy out. Oink, 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 that pig did shout. Now we have three. Three little pigs rolled in the mud. Squishy, squashy, felt so good. Farmer took one piggy out. Oink, 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 that pig did shout. Two. Two little pigs rolled in the mud. Squishy, squashy, felt so good. Farmer took one piggy out. Oink, 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 that pig did shout. Are you noticing a pattern? What do you think the farmer will do with the last pig? We'll find out. One little pig rolled in the mud. Squishy, squashy, felt so good. Farmer took that piggy out. Aha, uh -huh. did you predict farmer would take that piggy out? Yeah, good prediction. Oink, 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 that pig did shout. No little pigs rolled in the mud. They all looked so clean and good. Farmer turned her back and then those pigs rolled in the mud again. <laughs> Good job. Thank you for that. Well, I've got something here that's fun to wear that starts with P. What are these things? I've got some pajamas. That's right. I've got green pajamas, blue pajamas, 
and p -p pink pajamas. Yep, three pairs of pajamas. This one's a little wonky. There we go. And behind one of these pairs of pajamas, there hides a llama. So we're gonna do a chant to find our llama. Do you think the llama, think it in your head right now, is behind the green pajamas, the blue pajamas, or the pink pajamas? I'm gonna guess blue. Was that your guess? All right, we'll see. And uh, we're gonna do a rhyming chant for this one too, and it goes like this. Little llama, little llama, are you behind the blue pajamas? All right, we'll find out. One, two, three, is she there? She's not there. I think we should try the green pajamas. Little llama, little llama, are you behind the green pajamas? One, two, three, is she there? <gasps> not there either. Do you think she's behind the pink pajamas? Hmm, I hope so. Let's find out. Little llama, little llama, are you behind the pink pajamas? One, two, three, is she there? Oh, there's our little llama. Good job. Did you hide behind the pink pajamas because they started with P? Yeah, very clever little llama. If you guessed the pink pajamas first, you were right. So, I want to show you some cool things that start with P. Here's the first thing. Ooh, what is that thing? What kind of animal is that? Do you know? It's a porcupine. Listen to those two P's in that word, porcupine. That would be a fun long word to do bread and butter with, wouldn't it? And I learned the coolest thing about porcupines. You know how a lion baby is called a cub and a baby cat is called a kitten and a baby dog is called a puppy? A baby porcupine is called a porcupet. Porcupet. That's really silly. But you would not want a porcupine as a pet because they are feral. They are not friendly. And when they get upset, whoosh, they put all their quills out to try to hurt whatever's trying to bother them. Whoop, what else do we got here? What's that? This is a bird that a lot of people mistake for a penguin or a parrot, but it's not. This is a puffin. And here's a cool thing about puffins. See all the colors on the puffin's beak? In winter, puffin's beaks turn totally gray. And then in spring and summer, they become colors again, kind of like leaves, really. Could you imagine if your nose and mouth turned gray in winter, and then all of a sudden in spring, they were a different color? That's what happens with puffins. And the last thing I want to show you is this flower. And this flower starts with P because its real name is peony, peony. I like this flower because it looks really fluffy, almost like you'd want to stick your face into it. And I'm going to show you a peony bud and you're going to see something crawling all over it. So this is the peony in bloom. And this is the peony bud. What's, what's crawling all over that bud? Can you say? Yeah, ants are crawling all over that peony. And here's something cool about that. The ants crawl on peonies. Anytime you see a peony growing or starting to grow uh, in the spring or summer, you'll see those buds and you'll probably see ants on it. And that's because ants love peony nectar. So they're eating the nectar, but they're not hurting the peony. And they also eat any other insects that come up that do want to hurt the peony. So in some ways, they're protecting the peony from being attacked by those other bugs. So they kind of are helping each other, right? The peony is helping the ant have something to eat and the ant is protecting the peony. So we've got a porcupine, a puffin, and a peony. Those are some of our pea facts for the day. Parents, caregivers, every week we like to give a tip about one of the five things you can do to help get children ready to read. Those are talk, sing, read, write, and play. And this tip is about reading. Um, I read some nonfiction books to learn these neat facts about porcupines and puffins and peonies. So when you read with your child, don't forget to check out some nonfiction. Go with your child's lead on anything they're interested in, whether it's dinosaurs or royalty or presidents, things like that. 
And um, nonfiction often has lots of words in it. We have both kinds at the library, some with just a little word, some with lots. But the important thing to remember when you explore nonfiction with your child is you don't have to read every word on the page. You can just stop at the parts or do the captions or whatever looks interesting um, to you and your child. The important reason to read nonfiction with your child in addition to storybooks is because you encounter a lot more words in nonfiction, different words than you do in picture books. And of course you encounter more words in picture books than you do in daily conversation. So the more words they hear, the better prepared they're going to be when it gets uh, to become time for them to read. So read not just stories, but also nonfiction. And that's our tip. We have one more rhyme to do together. All right, everybody put up your hands. Um, let's make our hands. Oh, I can think of a snake that starts with P. Python. Two little pythons. Do pythons hop? No. Do pythons dance? No. Do pythons slither? Yeah, they do. So our pythons are in the grass and they're going to slither away. Two little pythons sitting in the grass. One named Slow. The other named Fast. Slither away, Slow. Slither away, Fast. Slither back, Slow. Slither back, Fast. Okay. Uh, let's do two little panthers. And panthers are a kind of big cat, right? Like lions, panthers, pumas, tigers. So just like cats, pounce. Panthers can pounce too. So our panthers are going to pounce. It's maximum P words going on. Two little panthers far from the crowd. One named quiet, the other named loud. Pounce away, quiet, pounce, 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 pounce. Pounce away, loud. Pounce, pounce, pounce. Pounce back, quiet. Pounce, 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 pounce. Pounce back, loud. Pounce, 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 pounce. Okay, good job. All right, well, it is time for our closing song. And for our closing song, we need a pair of magic glasses. Uh, so we're gonna put those right on top of our eyes. If you already wear glasses, you put those just right on top of your regular glasses because yours probably aren't magic. We're gonna look up. We're gonna look down. We're going to look all around and put our hands together and make a book. We can open it. And everything in our book today is going to start with the letter, you guessed it, P. P, P, P. So let's see what's inside. Oh, no, it's a purple people eater. Close the book. What else could be inside? glasses on. Let's not look in that book anymore today. Our song goes like this. These are my glasses. This is my book. I put on my glasses and open up the book. Now I read, 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 and I look, look, look. I put down my glasses and whoop, close up the book. Thank you for joining me for family story time. I had fun. I hope you did too. Think of doing some things that start with P today. Maybe pop some more bubbles or play pretend, one of my favorites. Uh, try not to pout. Mm, I hope you don't get moody and sad. I hope you get happy and have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming. <laughs>